Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Frugal Studio, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add motion blur to your 2D animation in OpenTunes as quick as possible. Motion blur can be identified as a streaking effect that appears on a moving object in film, animation, and even video games these days. Many have different tastes as to whether they like it or not, but in my opinion, adding motion blur effect is a great way to give your finished animation a more professional look, as long as you use it sparingly, that is. This tutorial will show you how to use the effect in general, but if you want to see a more advanced application of it, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. Okay, to get started, I'm going to identify where in my animation I want to add a motion blur. So it looks like it would, it would be best if we added it during the frames um, that indicate the fastest movement. The anticipation frame and then the in-between right after, which is frames 2 right here and frame 7, because these display the most distance traveled, see, from here to here and then from here to here in the least amount of time. So these seem like the fastest moving frames where we want to add a blur on. So we're going to add a blur on frames two and seven, but I'm also not going to cut the blur off immediately after frame seven. I'm going to gradually turn down the effect to give the animation a smoother look so it doesn't just immediately blur and then no blur. Let's get started by going to the animation room in the upper right tab of OpenTunes animation and then we're going to go down to effects schematic now i already have the motion blur effect active i'm going to delete that so i can show you guys how to do it all right so my main column with my animation on it is called mittens so i'm going to go to mittens right here i named it you can just double click right here um, on the top of the column in order to rename it i'm going to click mittens in the effect schematic also if your effect schematic doesn't look like this head over to the bottom right corner and then you're going to click this you may get this first but if you um, don't have what I just had, just click this and then you, it'll switch. It goes from the stage schematic to the effect schematic. All right. So, so right click your column, hit insert effects, blur, go to motion blur I and O. Now we're going to double click to open the effects control panel. Now for this tutorial, we're only going to be editing the X1 and the Y1 parameters here. These are going to control the direction and the strength of our motion blur. There are other parameters that may edit some of those aspects of the blur. However, we're not going to go over them in this tutorial, but do leave a comment if you're interested. So we're going to go to the first frame in our animation, frame one on this timeline right here, because as you can see, the frames in my animation aren't exactly numbered correctly. That's because they're numbered in the order that I made them rather than the order that they actually are. They actually appear on the XG. So going to frame one, we're going to click on it. Then we're going to hit the X1. We're going to hit this key symbol next to it. Click and then click for Y1 as well. I'm adding a keyframe for X and Y because X controls the horizontal direction of your blur and Y controls the vertical direction of your blur. So depending on your animation, as mine is moving to the right, I'm going to need, I could really only use X if I wanted to because I just need it going, the blur going horizontally. But if you have an animation that's going up or down, you're going to want to set a keyframe for Y. So I'm going to do both just to show you guys how to do it. We want our blur set to zero at the start because we don't want any motion blur on these on this first frame. We just want it to be on two and then seven and then maybe fade out um, to on the last frame. OK, so let's navigate to the last frame and then we're going to click the keyframe symbol next to X1 and Y1 again. So now our blur will have no blur here and no blur right here. And also for the rest of the frames in between, it's also not going to have any blur whatsoever. So if you hit render, our animation has nothing at all. And that's exactly the way we want it. So now I'm going to go over to frame two right here, click, which is actually frame nine on the timeline. But you know, again, these are just ordered in the way that I drew them. And I'm going to go over to X. And I'm going to type in 40. Now this isn't a specific number. This is just the number that um, I want to use, I think 40 is a good place to start if you want a rather intense blur. And now you see when we render, nothing will happen. Because actually when you change the value, you'll see that this keyframe will turn yellow. And what you have to do is click it and then it'll turn orange. And that means that the effect is active. When it turns yellow, I believe it means that you're changing it. And it's, I guess it's sort of a reminder that you need to actually set the keyframe. So now that we set it to 40, you can see that the blur is going horizontally to the right. This is what we want because my character is moving to the right and we want the two and seven frames to look like they're blurring into one another. So if your animation is moving to the left, you can type in negative 40. And then you can see the lines are going to the left, but we're going to keep it at 40 because because my character is moving to the right. And the same goes for the Y parameter. If you have an animation that's moving up or down, 
if I typed in 70 for Y, a positive 70, then the lines are going to move upwards, as you can see. And since we have an X parameter in there as well, it's moving diagonally upwards. But if we typed in negative 70 and then hit the keyframe button, it is going, it's going to point downwards and to the right because we also have that X parameter in there, just like that. So if you guys have a, a bouncing ball that's going up and down, you don't, you're gonna wanna use the Y parameter. If your bouncing ball is moving down, you're gonna want a positive Y parameter because you want the blur to be to be going up because you know it's falling from that direction. But we're gonna keep Y at zero. Okay, so now that we have our blur on frame two, you might notice that when we go to frame three that there is still some blur, which where we don't want it because we want it to start on frame two. If you want your blur to only start on a certain frame, go to the frame right before it, hit the keyframe button on X1 or whichever parameter you're using and then hit zero. Now our parameter is zero on the first frame, the frame right before two, and then when it reaches two, the blur is active. So on our last frame, frame 17, our blur is also set to zero. This tells Open Dunes to gradually decrease the blur from two where we originally set it. So if we go to 11, there still is some blur until we reach 17 where it's zero. But what if we want the blur to stop earlier? Say we want to stop at 11 or at six. All we have to do is click on the frame that we want the motion blur to disappear on, click the keyframe symbol and type in zero. Now we're telling OpenTunes, no blur at one, no blur right before two, blur on two and then stop on 11 and you're still stopped on 21. All right, let's hit control R and preview our animation and see what we've done so far. So after you finish configuring when and how the blur effect will appear, you're finished. Now we can just go on to exporting our animation. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, follow the link in the description to my Discord channel where plenty of kind folks, including myself, would be more than willing to help you out. If you found this video helpful, then drop me a like below. If you wanna learn how to make awesome 2D animations with a free program called OpenTunes, get subscribed because you won't wanna miss what I got cooking for you beginners coming soon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Special thanks to ONR on Patreon for supporting this channel. On Patreon, you can get the latest news about my animated film, Castle Dark, 4K wallpapers for your desktop, exclusive animation tutorials, and much, much more coming in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.